Welcome people to a new video. Today I'm without Lucas as this will only be a short installment about some programming stuff. It's basically about JavaScript's reduce function. This is also common in Scala on arrays and in Java it comes with a streaming API and was introduced I think in version 1.8 so everybody should know it by now and many other different languages have these features installed by now. So let's directly dive into some code and let me give you some example. So I opened up the MDN web docs, which is a really great documentary about several, when not all, basic functions on all standard built-in objects in JavaScript. So in this case, we are going to the reduce function, as I told before and it does nothing more than to apply a certain function you can define yourself in this case it's a, it's a simple summation um, to an array in this example one two three four and it's starting with the value zero which is supplied as a parameter after the function if i run this right now we have a 10 let's really quick change the five out and we get 15. So let's now go into the math we will just start with defining our, the, our array like uh, it what happened in the code. So we have a set L, which is an element of the real number room with cardinality of n. So it's basically our array, which is equal to a set consisting of L1, L2, all up to Ln, where ln in this case is also an element of the real number room um, and n is a natural number plus zero that's why the plus is up there um, so simple so far our next step would be to define our function there we abbreviate a bit from the code and just say a function f has uh, two parameters which is our preview value p and in this case it was called current value so let's call it c and it resolves in a another value let's call it r as result and now this is our defined reducer function as uh, mozilla was defining it and now we go further and define our initial value as a code bit we call it a0 in this case and it's also an element of rn uh, of r in this case um, i basically need to say that r could also be an arbitrary value like abc or whatsoever but in math mathematics it kind of makes no sense or i would define an own set where we have a tuple of uh, literal words so we can could do that but yeah i don't want to go into grammar and stuff so let's stick with the real number room in this case or better the um, natural number room if we would totally hold on the code but let's do it a little bit more or general so a0 is our initial value and let's now do as if we would apply our uh, an being in this case the application of our function with the previous value that being an minus one and the current value a n this would result in a n plus one and our next step would be a n plus one equals two f of i write it a bit weird now but it's a n plus one minus one because it's this minus one and now a n uh, plus one and now we would have a n plus two in this case because we are a step further now let's apply this to a real case um, i will just build up uh, define some values like l our starting set or our array basically we had it as one two three and four in the code i won't modify it right now and our a zero being um, zero at this in this case and now what what is still missing i should have done it before but it's our function this is as we had before p for previous and c for current value equals p plus c 
simple as that. And if we now start to apply it, we start at a one because a residual is predefined. So our next is a one. This means we apply our previous value, a uh, one minus one. So a zero basically. So there's a reason for our initial value. We need some value to, to start from. And you may want to define it before because you may not have a an, an number or so. It could be any object or a value or a string or whatsoever. You can do all kinds of things with it. You just, that's why I would um, say use TypeScript, use anything at all. So, and our next would be the current element, a one, which is being a one. And this results in, and let's uh, put in the values now. So a zero is zero, and our current value would be the one taken from the array. So this is equal to zero plus one. So a two is then being f of a two minus one. So the previous value one, and our current value is then a two being two in that case. So we have one plus two, which is three. Then we have a three. I do that all around now. And uh, in this case, we have our previous value three and our current value three. So that is a uh, six. And now a four, which is function of six and four. We are at the fourth element, which is actually four. And this is now 10. So there we are, running, have run our code on paper. Now you basically see how the reduce in, is internally applied. And the whole um, point in that is, it's basically tail recursive. This means this is executed, and then there is not a nested call, meaning that the function before is deleted from the store, only the value is stored, and this result will be used. So you are not blowing up the stack or anything else. That's basically one of the great opportunities. So at this point, I would say thanks for listening in.